it's been one hell of a week for UFC fans as its very own boss, Dana White, has landed himself in a bit of a sticky situation. Earlier advocating against domestic violence, he's proven to be quite the hypocrite when it comes to his own case. He won't be stepping down from the UFC. The chief was caught on camera striking his wife, which was shocking to many since he was seen teaching young fighters never to raise their hands on a woman back in 2014. You never bounce back from putting your hands on a woman. After he was caught doing the same thing, you'd think he'd take some accountability for his actions and get at least some sort of punishment, right? Wrong. I mean, he's the boss. Did you talk about the country and did you talk about yeah. what's going well, on? Well, we talked about a lot of things. I mean, we yeah. talked three hours. We talked about, you know, anything from the, our favorite Rocky movie to... And literally one of the most influential people in the world of MMA. And since there's been complete silence from everyone who would have the power to inflict some sort of punishment on him, he's a free man. Even UFC's most prominent sponsors, which include DraftKings, Crypto.com, Timex, Monster Energy, and Modelo, have yet to acknowledge the incident, while addressing his recent scandal during the UFC Vegas 67 Media Day. The 53-year-old was asked whether whether there would be any self-imposed repercussion, and his reply came as a surprise to many, especially because Dana admitted he was wrong. Yeah, you heard that right. You know, we've been doing this for, for almost 20 years, and uh, I don't know what else I need. I, I just, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, well, I, you know, I mean, that's a good way of looking at it, but, you know, I can figure some things out. The president surprisingly did take accountability for his actions, but it actually isn't that great once you think about it. Although White accepted what he did was unacceptable and said that he was embarrassed to be even caught up in a situation like this, he won't be facing any repercussions for his actions whatsoever. According to him, his punishment is that he'll be branded as a wife beater for the rest of his life, and that label would be enough of a burden for him. He also suggested that suspending him would it really be as much of a punishment for him as it would be to the UFC, the Endeavor stockholders, and the fighters relying on him to promote the sport. But that enraged a lot of people, who said that Dana's punishment shouldn't even be in his hands. That's it. Make sure these two don't touch each other. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's oh, your job. 100%. Why, yeah. why well, does that have to be your job? He's got guys there, too, that need to help make... He should not be in control of how things turn out for him. But considering his position in the UFC and the privilege that comes with it, that's the best we're gonna get. However, that still leaves the question, has his power and money cushioned him from receiving any punishment at all? Well, does a one-week debut delay count? Yeah, because that's pretty much it. That's the only punishment the president is gonna get for striking his wife in public twice. His newest project, the Power Slap League, was delayed by a week from January 11th to the 18th. It doesn't even seem like Dana cares much about the wife-beater brand he claims to have been burdened with. I know. Um, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to play out. Listen, we've been very patient in this whole thing and trying to get something done with him. And Since he went right back to promoting his recent prospect less than 14 days after his altercation was caught on tape. The only other considerably mild punishment that was suggested was his suspension from the UFC for a month. But this would barely make a difference since White already spends months away at a time without anyone noticing. The response to his promotions had been outrageous, with fans ridiculing White and mocking his new league and his actions alike. While some Twitter users commented how it was too soon for him to to be thinking of promoting his prospects. Others slammed the power slap league, calling it a waste of time. Some even wittingly referred to the incident. Connor is a southpaw and, and Connor hits hard. When he hits people, they go. Um, Floyd's definitely not knocking him out saying that it seems like Dana White has had enough practice for the new season. Even though he caused a huge amount of outrage, the fact that he got let off easy isn't even all that surprising. In fact, the UFC has a poor domestic violence record. Floyd should be <laughs> kicking in this. Or why not just open it up and they both have pool noodles? I mean, why not? <laughs> Why not just go nuts with this and really add everything you can think of? This isn't the first time one of the UFC's members was caught up in an abusive scandal. And what's even more disappointing is that a sports league worth around $9 billion has absolutely nothing to say about the situation. There's this well-known stigma surrounding the MMA and the UFC community. It's generally thought that the people participating in the sport have a previous record of being bullies. Several athletes, including big names like Tiago Silva and John Jones, have all either been accused accused, arrested, or convicted of various abuse charges. And then, so, great card tonight. You Thank you. killed it in MSG. 
what comes next after MSG? Like, what's your next big card? Even though most of them were sent home or cut from the UFC, many returned back once the media coverage blew over. Another example is Greg Hardy, who was an NFL player with a disturbing history. The details of the case were so disturbing that it eventually led to his NFL career ending. However, much to his convenience, the charges were erased from his record a year later, when the victim failed to show up for an appeal hearing. There's also Rachel Ostovich. Her husband at the time beat her for over nine minutes, causing her to suffer numerous bruises and a broken eye, and was recorded saying he was going to murder her. The only punishment he faced, four years of probation. Both times. <laughs> um, so Matt and Rory will be available um, for you guys to speak to. If these men can get away with this level of abuse, it's no wonder Dana has made his way out after simply hitting his wife. I'm not the only one who's enraged at how all this turned out for White. Fellow fighters have a lot to say too, especially as they have had zero tolerance for Dana's actions. Oscar De La Hoya, Daniel Cormier, actors Jamie Foxx and D.L. Hughley, and former NBA player Jay Williams are among those who have also spoken up about the lack of response and comments from the authorities. Retired UFC fighter Ramsey Najim also mocked White's self-entitlement, referring to a nine-month suspension that he received for a positive marijuana test in 2019. It's to compete in the heavyweight division. We got the interim middleweight championship of the world. Yoel Romero versus Robert Whittaker. He wrote that the better punishment would have been to have been known as a weed user and have to live with that label for the rest of his life. One-time UFC lightweight title challenger Al Quinta soon followed Najim's trail. He referred back to when he was suspended from winning bonus for three fights, for cursing at the crowd and wrecking a hotel room, saying it would have been better to be known as a crowd-cursing hotel wrecker. Although most of the public has picked up the same stance, there are some within the MMA sphere who have tried to make excuses to justify White's actions. One of their main arguments has been that Anne, Dana's wife, provoked him by hitting him first. If she didn't want him to get violent, she should not have hit him in the first place. But that contradicts the very thing White had spoken up against. There's never, ever an excuse for a man to hit a woman. But we now know better than to think he would practice what he preaches, right? Anyway, domestic abuse cases are pretty common. Why does this one matter so much? Well, it's because Dana has the power to make a change. Here's the thing. If Dana has really taken accountability for his actions and is urging people not to make excuses for him, then what's holding him back from making a change? Taking into account the position he has, he actually has the power to really turn things around, starting with implementing a no-tolerance policy in the UFC. He could have easily easily used this opportunity to address the issue of domestic violence that terrorizes thousands of households in America. His response to this entire fiasco has just shown how people in higher positions don't have to pay for their actions, and the same rules and consequences don't apply to them. This turns into a problem for people who aren't afforded the same privileges. For now, he sits protected by his wealth and his privilege. But what about the thousands of victims who continue to suffer because people like him refuse to take a stand? With all that, that's all from my side on the Dana White fiasco. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.